Oops, there we go. Here we go. We're, today we're going to share a couple of little things, you know, just for the holidays, things we can do. A um, couple of different things. I'm sharing one. Bruce is sharing one. Uh, Michelle, maybe in, someone else will jump in and share something. Uh, so I will hand it off to Mr. Oh, Bruce. I'm not, I'm not sure how much I have for the holidays, but I can tell you that December 26th, I changed all the tags and stuff on Etsy from Christmas gifts to Valentine's Day gifts. Um, an interesting thing, completely sidebar, is I have a buddy of mine that does print on demand. He's six figures a year in print on demand. And we were talking about New Year's. And he says, you know, for the past couple of years, I spent time designing stuff for New Year's. He says, and it bombs. He says, because people don't think about New Year's and buying stuff for New Year's unless they're throwing a party until December 30th. So that's just an interesting thing. If I can share something completely separate, I heard a great, I guess it's inspirational. And it was told as a sociologist did an experiment with sharks. He created a tank, he put a shark in it, and then he put some fish in the, in the tank. And of course, the shark went after the bait fish and ate it. Then he put a plexiglass divider in and put the bait fish on the other side of the glass. And the shark would go trying to break the glass and trying to go after the bait fish. And he did this, he took the fish out, and this went on. And it, what he found was is that the shark stop fighting as hard to try to get through the glass and then finally just gave up and just left the fish there. Now they took the glass away and the shark didn't go after the fish because in his mind, there was always a barrier. He wasn't going to get the fish. And the moral of the story is, is that no matter what you've done before and think you can't do it, you can't think that that barrier is still there because it probably is it or it may not be there. So you've got to keep on trying and keep on going after your goal and going after your your gusto. Cool. Happy holidays. That's what I got. Well, I was going to ask you too. I do know uh, some of the internet guys, uh, they, from about the middle, about now, well, actually last week, about the middle of December, they focus more on posting and doing stuff for their brand rather than trying to sell. They'll every once in a while, they'll pitch something like, give yourself a gift and, you know, you pitch your product, right? But generally, they're saying, like, now's a good time just to do the lighthearted, because it's the holiday times that people are playing online, you know. Um, so I just, uh, I thought that was interesting. And then they kind of start slanting toward, especially these are people in our world, coaching, self-development, you know, uh, to really start, as we, as we used to say in the clinic side, hit the ground running uh, after uh, January 1st. In fact, in my clinics, I always thought, I wouldn't even advertise till about the 7th or 8th of January, right? And especially for weight loss or smoking and all that stuff we used to do in the clinics, because First of all, everybody says they made the New Year's resolution. And you, excuse the language, you got to let them fuck up first, right? Yeah. And then, and then, you know, it's like, right. And I know this from the recovery world, you know, the 12 step program gets busy the second week of January, right? When finally, maybe the, the pressure's on about what an asshole you were during the holidays drinking. Uh, and, and stuff. So it's like, you know, and I, I, I don't know if that's still true, but I, I kind of heard that. So, but it's a good time to work on your brand and who are you and put that stuff up. What do you think of that, Mr. Bruce? Well, it's interesting. I actually think that starting December 26th, it, besides doing brand stuff, it probably makes sense to start doing posts on little tidbits of how to Keep your New Year's resolution so you can actually do it. And if you keep on giving them little tips between now and the first week in January, 
then you can sell them the second week in January, because as you said, they probably screwed up by the second week of January. So they're looking for how do I keep this New Year's resolution going? So I would think you keep on feeding them tips for two weeks, and then you can like put them on the sell. So I think you're right. I think it's a great idea. Cool. All right. And now Miss Michelle is going to share with us. I don't know what the hell she's going to share with us. She's going to share something with us. I asked her to, you know, put a little something. And so I'll turn it over to Miss Michelle. I did, because, you know, if I'm given a task, I'm on it. So <laughs> mine is a little different. I thought I would go through um, a technique and um, boost us all for the holiday party season which it, it started, but let's just, we know, we know there's family and friends that are making special food. And I want to remind you that the food is not special. Sorry, it's not. It's a recipe that someone put together. The person that made it, who is maybe dead or alive, or you have a great uh, feeling for, that is the connection that was special or is special. However, don't default back to thinking food is the special thing. Food is the reward for, you know, staying on task all day, staying on task at Christmas while the, the company was there, staying on task this whole season, and then you decide to lose your mind. That's the old you thinking those thoughts. That's the default thinking, and you can snap back into it. And I want to say that as soon as you start thinking the justifications, the rationalizations, that, that, that is when you tap in to right here, right now, I'm a different person right here, right now. Those were the old things that did me in. Those are the old things that got me fat. That's the, the old things that got me drunk. Those are the old thoughts that led me down that path. And the new you, the new you has a whole uh, uh, box or file cabinet in your brain. Just ask your brain. Your brain will deliver to you rapidly within seconds how to overcome the feeling and then you have to follow through so you could ask how can i avoid the trap of falling into who i was or what can i do even in the face of a big table of food what can i do to avoid overeating in this moment and your brain your brain your brain will tell you in that moment and so and so if you don't mind, go ahead, close your eyes for a moment. I'll put on my glasses and I'll walk you through something. So go ahead. I'm Italian, as you know. Picture it. Picture it. As Sophia says, picture it. Imagine the setting. You're on point with your healthy eating. You've been drinking your water, staying hydrated. You've been enjoying small portions in ways that surprise and delight you. While you even remember those times when you took something, maybe scoop something out of a serving dish, and then you allowed that spoon to fall back into the serving plate because in that split second, you made a better choice. In that split second, your intuition said, nope, put it back. And you did because that's who you are now. You even remember that time when you reached for something that you know was unhealthy or not part of your plan or was simply too much. You remember reaching for it. You see your hand and your arm extended from your body. And in a split second, you pulled it back, just like that, just like that, you pulled it back. You had it out to take something and instantly in a way that surprised and delighted you, you pulled it back. You pulled it back. It's a way to go, way to go. Now picture it. It's a holiday gathering, party season. And maybe you're at your house, maybe at a friend's house, relative's place, maybe you're at a restaurant. Only you know. Now picture it. There's a table full of food, holiday food, 
things that we have decided at one time or another in the past, in the past, we're special in the past. And you look at it and the scent fills the air. Everything looks delicious to your mouth. Maybe it's the savory food making your mouth water. Maybe it's the sugary desserts, the pies, the cakes, the cookies, making your mouth water. Now picture it. You hear in your mind's eye, you hear the past, the former you, the old version of who you were chiming in with. Oh, it's a special occasion. You've done so well. You deserve it. I want it. I want it. It reminds me of the holidays past. It makes me think of that special person who's no longer here, that connection. And your heart starts to beat. And you notice your heart beating. And in that split second, in that split second, you remember that your heart beating and mouth watering are actually signals for you to realize that you are using lies, rationalizations, and justifications to make this okay. Because you remember when the justifications and rationalizations lies begin, you know it's not okay to attach emotions with food. You know it's not okay to label certain foods as special. You know it's not okay to go off the rails because everyone else is doing it or whatever the reasons are that you would have done that in the past, because that's what got you into trouble in the past. And oh, oh, you realize mm. in that split second that that is what's giving you the old thoughts, that the past, the past, you almost defaulted, almost defaulted into past behaviors, but you overcame them easily, effortlessly, naturally, and in the right ways in a split second, because you know instinctively who you are. You know what was happening. Oh, default. You realize that spending time with your family and friends is the real reason to get together, to laugh. And so you picture yourself laughing, to have fun. You picture yourself having fun, to catch up, to play games, to pray, to feel good, whatever it is. That is why you're there. That's why they're there. And you recall your strengths. You recall your progress. You are proud of yourself and you're allowed to feel that in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, spiritually connecting with how proud you are allowed to be. Notice your heart beating of yourself. That's what that means. Your heart beating is because you are proud of yourself because in that split second, you made the choice to be proud of yourself. You're enjoying the time because right there, right here, right now, you are connecting with the people presently, in the present moment, with your wonderful personality, even connecting with all the people, all the fun, and even with that certain relative. Well, you know who, you know that one, and you can laugh about it in your head as you turn and walk away from that person. And so now, now you have a new perspective on what that table of food means. It means you're creating new memories with small portions with only one or two things, it means that you are slowing down to understand the signals and clues to stay on track for your success. It means that you are happy with your choices and aren't expecting the guilt, the shame, the sabotage, because you recalled your power and your strengths. And as good as that feels, it feels even better to be the role model of success because you know, you know, they are watching and you know they are and they may or may not compl compliment you and that's okay. But you know, you are on a new path. You know, you are on a new path. You are not the old you they remember. So go ahead and be proud of yourself. Picture it. The table you see, picture it. The food is there. You see it differently, just like that, easily, effortlessly, and naturally. You see it as unwanted calories. Yeah. You see it as well-meaning people and fat, and that's who you used to be. Yeah. It's not for you anymore, and you're good with that. You're good with that. You are good with that. And you use all you know to stay on point as your brain now answers your question, what 
can I do to stay on track? What can I do? He's only effortlessly natural. You hear the answer now. What can I do? You know, you are happy to follow through with your success because you are successful and you now, now, now walk your talk. The past is over. The past is over and you are a new person. You are connected to your past relatives as they look down from the heavens, happy and proud of you because that is all they ever wanted for you, happy and proud. To be happy and proud of yourself and you connect with them in that way. Thank you for reminding me who I am. Thank you, you say to them, thank you. And you connect into that feeling of them being proud and you feel it, you hear it, you see it, you know it. And so it is. And so it is. Take a deep breath. Feel good about yourself, feel powerful, and open your eyes, take a stretch, and Ugh. connect into that good feeling as you continue, walk your talk. Cool. cool. That was good. Yay! Ah! <laughs> I'm so glad we recorded that. Thank yeah. you. That yeah, was I'll, good. I'll, yeah. I'll put this in the national na, the facebook group national federation of neuro linguistic programming will be in there right as a resource cool no. all right oh what i was gonna show is uh um i had a couple ideas but i thought well here's here's one um oops my thing is screwed up here there we go is and it's kind of like um one of the techniques that we did in the sports thing that jeff kind of tweaked um that i really liked and i've used for other things besides sports because what mr jeff neal would talk about when he'd be coaching an athlete uh in real time this isn't in your office where you got time and everything you know you're you're you know, you're in the dressing room as they're taping the hands and they're going to go out and fight in front of 10,000 crazy people. And it's probably on pay-per-view, right? Or you're in the ring, you're walking into the ring and you got that prep time while they're doing all the bullshit that they do, uh, which is a lot of fun. If you've never been to an MMA or boxing, it's fun to go see this part, right? And how do you calm that athlete down? How do you get them ready to do this, right? And he kind of synthesized a couple of different things, which is how we come up with techniques, which is, you know, he would say to somebody when they're nervous, especially, you know, getting ready to go out to do, to do the event, whatever it is, you know, he'd have them like take their hands, go like this, take a deep breath and look up and keep their head and look up. As we all know, that's separating a little bit of the brain. You're kind of disengaging parts of your brain, you know, your, your, your limbic system a little bit as you're looking up accessing the visual thing. And then he would instantly have them, you know, visualize going through the event, right? The fight, you know, making some of the moves that they think they want to make, the moves they've worked on, whatever it happens to be, right? And, and then a successful outcome of the event. So you've won the fight. And then he, then he would say, you know, as you're doing that, you, you just imagine you're going through the event, you're doing the things you planned on doing, it's working out really well. Um, and it's a successful event. You have the outcome you want. You won the fights. Then he says, close your eyes, take a deep breath, step into that and feel that. And just look back and know that this is an event that's going to happen. And it just hasn't happened yet. And then come back to now. And then he would take them out to the ring. Right. And I, and I like that because it's a great technique that you we can use for stuff like this. How many of us have, um, things we have to go to for the holidays, right? Um, and I've used this, uh, a, a version of this, not quite the way he did it. You know, when I was running rehab centers or working a lot more in substance abuse, you know, because it's the holidays, people offer you more liquor or now probably smoke, all the stuff that's going on in the world, right? And, you know, um, you know you, so you kind of run that movie through of saying no thank you. You know, saying no, meaning no, and enjoying saying no. And 
Uh, but this would be a way to do that, you know, take it. So I've got one Saturday night going to the lab because it's also Christmas, besides being Christmas Eve, it's my wedding anniversary. We decided to get married, you know, and we looked at dates. I said, well, I'd like to either pick, you know, Valentine's Day, which is kind of hokey, or my mom's birthday, right? And and I said, and I was honest with Christina. Some of you've met her. I go, honestly, it's because I can remember those two goddamn days, right? Other days may blend in. She goes, well, my wife's a Christmas fanatic, right? If I, you could see some Christmas shit behind me. Huh? Decorations. I, I'm not kidding. I, she was out of town. It took me a half a day to unload all the Christmas stuff down for her to put out, right? She's a Christmas fanatic. So she said, why not Christmas Eve? I thought this would be a great thing. Right? A, it's a good day. It's easy to remember. B, it will give us an automatic out. If, and we've been together, this is our 31st year married, right? This would give us an out to avoid going to some of the holiday stuff, right? Oh, we're going to go to our Christmas. We'd always go to dinner, just me and her. We'd go to like, I don't know, some, usually an Italian restaurant, right? I said, we're going to go to dinner. Then we could show up to the family functions. And, uh, so, you know, so that, that's that. But so this, this year we're going to friend's house uh, for the Christmas Eve. And, you know, like you was just said, you know, I've been trying to watch my diet, change my body, do some things. And so that would be a good technique for me to practice going through because she's, um, she's a good cook where we're going. And she always caters in some really good stuff from Publix and all this other stuff, right? And so uh, kind of what, what Michelle just did, but I can imagine, you know, taking a deep breath, looking up, you know, and I know what the house looks like, where we're going. I can imagine going through the event, seeing all, you know, Tito and Renata and uh, Larry and Gay. I'm just naming people. These are people I know are going to be there, right? And I can go through and imagine, okay, I'm not going to eat the cakes. You know, I'm not going to do this. I'm, I'm going to avoid um, some of the high carb foods. And just making it through, but enjoying the evening. And then I can imagine stepping out, seeing it at the end when we're getting in the car or the truck to come back home and just kind of pre-program it in my mind. Uh, you know, and I, I'm going to, I taught this with a couple of people with addictions about going to uh, like football parties and that, you know, that if you, if you think you have to go, because I was, first I'd question, they're not going to not party because you're not there, son or lady. You know, I hate to break that to you, but they don't really give a shit. Uh, but if you think you got to go, you know, go through the event and see and see what it's like and then practice this. So that's the technique, you know, I would throw into the mix that's good and it's fast. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of time. And I like. I like a lot of these kind of techniques when I used to run my clinic and now that I'm coaching people again, it's like, I call them walk away techniques after you do some uh, session when, you know, whatever you've done, visual squash, whatever you do in the session. And then as they're walking out the door, you can say, here's a little technique you can do like an anchor technique or whatever it is, a little walk away technique that they take with them. And I don't know how many times that's the only thing they remember, which is fine. You know, it's, which is fine. Uh, because I always remind myself, they're not paying to hear me talk. They're paying to get a result. <laughs> and most people, the less I talk, the quicker I do it. If they get the result, the happier they are. You know, as one of my mentors would say, and this is for note for all my hypnotists and coaches, you know, he would say, his name was Russell Yarnell. He's dead now. And Norman McGill kind of said the same thing. The problem with most hypnotists, they fall in love with their goddamn voice. And they think people want to hear them talk. And they don't. They just want to stop smoking, lose weight, whatever it is. That's, that's what they want. And most of us are very busy. You know, and that's why, you know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but that's my little walk away technique. Um, cool. I like it because you can use this with anything, you know, with that person that, you know, that brother or sister that's constantly violating your boundaries or your mother that won't stop asking about something that, you know, you've asked her, you know, like you can use this with toxic people and, oh, yeah. you know, like you're visualizing them saying something, you're visualizing being annoyed. This is how you're going to handle it. 
then you feel great afterwards because yeah. and you know hook yeah. you into a reaction to transfer their negative energy yeah it's, and, and, you, and you know they're going to say but i made this just for you you have to have some uh, screw you um but you know and you could just have some fun with it cool stuff yeah yeah and visualize like how good it's going to feel after and oh yeah, yeah. And then make sure you run it to the end so then you don't go home, open on the haagen and go, I'm going to celebrate now. <laughs> no. Cool. All right. Anyone, anyone have another little quick technique they would like to share, throw out there? No? I'm with you on the well-meaning. There's the in-your-face sabotagers that are actively working to hurt your progress because they can, they think. And then there's those sneak attack, but they don't even realize they're doing it. The well-meaning, as Dr. Will, you know, the well-meaning sabotagers, I call that, because when I'm with, you know, talking with clients, I tell them, you know, this this is Grandma Frida's recipe, you know, and oh, I made it just for you, like he said. And that's, I tell them, I say, you know, you can either take it and don't eat it, just put it to the side because holidays are for lying, you know. Oh, I have a tummy ache. Oh, you know, I do this. Oh, you know, but well, she, what, grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me have it so I can take it home later. And as, and I also tell my clients, don't you dare let that get into your house. You open your window and you throw, not the Tupperware container, you <laughs> empty that food because I'm sure the deer, the raccoon, who, whatever, will enjoy it too. Christmas buffet for them too. But it doesn't make it to your house. You take it out, you save face for the well-meaning sabotager, or just so you don't have to deal with their nonsense, but it does not go into your house. You toss it out the window, toss it out, you know, or if you can wrap it up, throw it away <laughs> while you're at, still at their house. But I also am big into saying, I have a stomach ache. I can't, I cannot, you know, and yeah, why, why? Yeah. Yeah, it, it is for your success. And then, <laughs> it to be received. And happy holidays. Yeah, yeah, for you're receiving it with love. You're like, thank you so much. It's really sweet of you. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's, I mean, you know, it's like saying, oh, it out the window this line of coke just for you don't you love me yeah. you're not gonna do a you were more anymore. you were more fun when you were drinking oh yeah that's yeah. what an alcoholic always hears and means you were the asshole so we could all point at you while we're drinking i mean yeah that i mean that happened with us with a relative one year when they were um you know freshly sober and i said hey you know let's just not have anything at the table and they're like oh they're fine I'm sure it's fine and I'm like if it were cocaine would you be okay serving just a little bit of cocaine at Thanksgiving <laughs> I, that's not how it works yeah. what are you talking about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, yeah if you start thinking of that it's like you know like that that sugar is going to make you sick or that dairy is going to make you sick what? there's a it funny comedian who did that bit where he's like if you're diabetes your friends are like come on man yeah. it's just yeah. a cute so cake man come on you can have it man it's like no that's how i am with beer it's not okay i can't well, and, have one and whatever we, your it, what you know whatever your health issue is that you have to regulate well and like when michelle was saying about like the di difference between well-meaning and you know family members but also our our field is full of this bullshit you know we see it at this one conference ah oh, you know you know you got to have a drink and you got to do this, you know, to have some fun. Um, I remember that one year I, I blow, I, I, I got off track and kind of blown up a little bit, right. Got to about 190. And then the next year I came back to the conference, the conference will remain unnamed national guild. And, uh, you know, and I was, I just competed right before the comp conference, right. It was a martial arts thing and I had to make weight. To, to compete in the martial arts thing. So I was lean and I swear to God at the conference, these are caring, compassionate, supposedly trained 
you know, hypnotists, mental health professionals, I don't know how many said, are you okay? You've lost a lot of weight. You know, kind of hinting that you must have, you know, cancer or, or immune system disorder or something. I'm like, no, the difference between us is I know a good hypnotist, you don't. Yeah. Uh, I know a good hypnotist. And maybe they, like you say, it was like, I don't know. It, it, but yeah, I always think of that, the well-meaning. And sometimes the well-meaning is that, you know, pat you on the back while they're looking for the space between the shoulder blades. Right. Uh, so yeah it's even one of our questions in our um meta questionnaire that hey are there going to be people who are not happy for you stop drinking are there going to be people who are ha not happy that you're taking control of your health are there going to be people who are not happy that you're not overeating and being the fool you know i i mean in my family, everybody brings a lot of food. There's no small portions until, you know, I will do the small portions. And it's like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Have more, have more. Because, you know, seconds, you know, or they'll just put it on your plate. And it's like, oh, oh no, now, now. Then I recognize, all right, not well-meaning jerk, jerk. You know, no, 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 no. And I love exposing in my own mind who, who is really cheering me on or not. Okay. And the one meaning I will say like, oh no, I am doing this or that. And then they'll back off. But if it continues, not well-meaning, not well-meaning. Well, there was a yeah. guy I coached. He was a bodybuilder, a pro, IFBB, International Federation of Professional Bodybuilders. And he goes, there was always this competition in February, right? That a lot of people wouldn't go to because they would take the holidays off, right? And anybody who knows anything about body, whether you like that look or not, that's irrelevant. The discipline of the diet is outrageous. I mean, nine, I love these people who go, I don't lift weights because I don't want to get all muscular. I used to have clients tell me that and I go, don't worry, you ain't got the balls to do the work that it takes to get muscular, ma'am or sir. Yeah, it's like, yeah. But, you know, in the workout with the diet, and this guy used to say that, that like, you know, only the hardcore people would show up for this one. And it was one of the ones that got you ready for the Arnold, which is like the golden thing for the professional bodybuilding world. And he, and that's, and the reason I, he started to see me was, you know, he had to go to several holiday things, you know, uh, I think because his wife was Jewish, you know, and, and he was Italian. So it's like, oh, they, oh, my God, the guilt level uh, and the food between Hanukkah and Christmas. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so, you know. So anyway, he he decided what he did is he had his wife tell the relatives, you know, this is what he does for a goddamn living. And if you offer them a piece of pie, we're leaving. Wow. You know, it's like. I like that. You know. You're going to respect like, our. Like, like uh, Ashley said, too. It's like somebody early in recovery. It's like you offer them a drink. I'm going to. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're leaving. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, well, a lot of parents are like that, too, with their kids. You know, they're like, you know, even if it's a stupid rule, no blueberries after three. You know, like, it's just like, don't. <laughs> Some parents are very much, you know, like, like you can't, you know, and I think that's good. I think you need to have, and again, that tells you who in your life is an asset, you know, like, a, you know, a friend is not going to guilt trip you that you now have to eat what I put on your plate because I chose to serve you. And I'm not going to say, if you don't eat it, it means you don't love me. And our relationship is nothing like, you know, but those are the, those are the subtle, especially the, you know, older generation. It's very, oh, the, yeah. I mean, the even older like, generation. Yes, exactly. They're the worst. Even the forced affection. I really had to like educate my mom because my mom thought I was being rude and my daughter was being rude <laughs> because I wasn't, you know, like give them a hug and kiss now. And it's just like, I'm sorry, mom. I'm not going to force her to hug and kiss people. 
That's no, just a kiss, you know, like, she, you know, she loves you. You know, she adores you. You guys spend time together. Like, no, I, no. But, you know, it's all types of stuff. It's boundaries all over the place, but. There's a class we should do the first year, something on boundaries. Yes. Boundaries would be. Because we're not taught awesome. boundaries. Yeah. You know, especially yep. inner, like in the family. Some of us can have strong boundaries outside, but what about those? Yep. You know, family boundaries. Those are the hardest. And because of the guilt and because of, you know, the issues of love or you love me or you don't love me and the mixed messaging is the worst. When I would go home to visit my parents, my mom would spend a week ahead of time baking and I was trying to lose weight and I would arrive and she would immediately lay out these platters of baked goods to celebrate my homecoming. And I would say, mom, you know, I'm working on my weight. I really, I would appreciate it if, you know, don't, I don't want to eat this. And she'd get incensed and upset and hurt and say, you have to, I spent a week baking. So I'd have a piece. And then the next day she'd go, Carrie, you've really put on weight. <gasps> oh, I know. Oh, what the oh, hell? Oh, oh, I mean, oh. All the time. No, I try to visit all the time. like, like if it has gluten in it, like you're going to feel sick. You're going to feel terrible. Don't have it. You know, the same with the alcohol. Like you think it's going to make you feel better. <laughs> Is it though? You know, like that, that sort of stuff. And you, and a lot of times people need help with the words to like, how do I say to grandma? I love you, grandma. I'm not eating cookies this year you know because the sugar Those are the ones i would take and throw out the window because they don't get it that's okay they don't get it take it throw it out the window as you're driving home sorry it doesn't make it home it doesn't, yeah, go, in it it doesn't go in the freezer for later no 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 it's still garbage it's still it's still fat and sugar there's no nutritional value in it whatsoever throw it out give it to the deer and the raccoon and <laughs> yeah let's poison them with sugar yeah. Yeah. I mean, well i'm not saying that i'm just saying <laughs> they enjoy the ones who get not oh. us we don't absolutely absolutely yeah oh bruce pointed that out that's good yeah exactly yeah they yeah. they push the food because certain generations that's weren't true. like lately i've been telling everybody i just my wife goes I was just talking to my friend, Dr. Dave, and uh, he's going to West Virginia. Anyway, you don't need to know that. But as we're finishing the phone call, I go, OK, well, you know, we'll, we'll let's go to lunch when you get back. And and uh, I end the call with, I love you, brother. You know, they, and men have trouble doing that. Yeah. You know, and I've been doing it at like some of the 12 step meetings. And the only place it was comfortable to say that was on like high performance military teams. Right? right because you might get killed it was no big deal so you know but it's like you know it's that brotherhood but we have trouble saying that to other other men correct mr andreas <laughs> would you agree you've been quiet yeah i have a little bit of a different not a problem but uh, you might not like to hear that but uh, i'm competing in CrossFit, so my problem is I'm having a hard time gaining weight. Oh. So I actually, if you guys, if anybody follows uh, Dwayne Johnson or The Rock, he, he always has cookies once a week. So I'm pretty strict, like six, six days a week, I eat everything as, as I'm supposed to, like I measure my food and all that. But once a week, I have a cheat day, that's where I gain weight. And mm -hmm. So for me, when the holidays come in, I look at that day as a cheat day and I'm trying to get as much as many carbs as I can in my body, but I burn them a lot. So again, yeah. that works for me because my goal is a little bit different. I'm, I'm trying to bulk up a bit. Yeah. So. Well, if you're burning the calories, like what did they say? What was his name? Michael Phelps. I think his average diet was eight to 10,000 calories a day. That's yeah. What I heard. Yeah. Right. And then people go, yeah, but he was burning 8,000 calories a day, you know, right. 
Yeah. It's like most of us, just like when you're in the, uh, when you're on those uh, certain units, when you're in training, you're probably eating four or 5,000 calories a day, right? When you're on the teams or the ranger units, but you know, you're doing a forced march 40 miles with a full backpack, you know, and, and, and ammo and an M16 and full combat gear. You're probably burning some calories. And you're young and stupid, so you don't know any better. <laughs> and you get in your 50s and your knees shoot and your hips go out. Oh. Well, and we've got to evolve with the times. I mean, back in the day when we didn't have industrialization and all of this stuff, I mean, having a huge feast and feeding your family because you loved them and wanted them to eat. But yeah. you know, that, it doesn't come from a bad place, but we've got to evolve with the times. And now- Yeah, up to, up to you know, three, we have, three, we have, yeah. I didn't have to worry, it was a hundred years ago. You know, like yeah. there's things that- Well, up to a couple hundred years ago, 90% of the humans on the planet would go through starvation at least once in their life. Yeah. I read that, you know, it's like there's just no food. There was, you know, the potato famine in Ireland, the, plus the potato famine in Germany. I mean, the list goes on the wheat famines that happened in Italy and, you know, the Middle East. Um, so, yeah, sharing food is in our DNA. That's the hard part. You know, it's the ultimate compliment to yeah. share your your food and drink with with someone, you know. And things used to be in season or out. You know, I mean, nowadays you can get sweets and cookies all the time. It's not a once a year thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like it oh, used to be right. where you would kind of save your sugar and your sweets for. For guests. For, for a special, like it was, truly was a special occasion. Now you're getting three cups of sugar just in the breakfast cereal. You know, like it's not, like it used to be something special, but it's not anymore. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you kind of have to just adapt. Yeah. I want to add that I really like Michelle's idea on the bringing food and instead of like arguing with people because it right. can get you into the dark place sometimes. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I grew up in Eastern Europe. I'm from Latvia. And there, if you don't drink, like you're an enemy. Like literally, yeah. like people don't even want to talk to you if you're a non-drinker. So, and what people do, people that do not drink, they don't tell them that they don't drink, but they fake that they drink. They <laughs> And half of the time, most of the people already drunk. They don't even understand what's going on. So <laughs> you, you do take the glass, but you like, or you pour it out or something. They wouldn't even know that you didn't drink that. So you kind of like lying. Yeah you, to them. yeah, you walk around with a, with your, yeah. With a, so yeah. When, when I stop drinking and every time we go to the event or the wedding, I love my sparkling water and make sure you put lime in the glass. Because that lime looks like you're drinking like a mixed alcoholic drink. That's it. Nobody asks questions. You, you're drinking. Okay. Nobody knows. And then you're good. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Exactly. Uh, There's nothing wrong with being polite. But that again, that also shows you who do you have to be polite to yeah. versus what friends of yours. You can just be like, you know, I'm not drinking today yeah. or I'm not, you know, I don't drink anymore. You know, some friends are like, oh, cool. Good for you. And other ones are like, what? You know, yeah. but. Yeah, I've told totally right. done that. You want leftovers? Sure, thanks. You know, get home just right in the right in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, everyone. Thank you for sharing. And next time, Miss Danae, don't over, don't dominate the conversation the way you're <laughs> dominating. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was gonna mention I, I I was gonna mention that I really like the uh the I love you but no thank you like to preface it with I know that your intentions are good but you know because that way they won't take it personally I think you gotta let them know it's not a personal thing I know your intentions are well I love you but <laughs> no thank you yeah so I, I like that idea <laughs> yeah cool all right everyone have a happy Merry Christmas. And Happy you. Hanukkah. Thank you. Hanukkah. Thank you. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy and well, yes. next year, next week on the 21st, we'll think you guys yeah. bring, brainstorm ideas for if you want to have a talk next Wednesday, the, which is the 28th. Oh, I do. The New Year's. So just kick around <laughs> some ideas and we'll, and we'll put one together. Okay. Boundaries. Boundaries. I may or may not be available next week, but. Okay. Uh, have fun if I'm not here. All right. Well, if you're not here, oh, you have fun, Ashley. I have yeah. a good one, Dr. Will. 
how do you keep the peace on the table when discussions arise? And now with the vaccine is a perfect example. Pack a silence. <laughs> silence. We are all like, we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Pack <laughs> it's silence. <laughs> we are all like, leave the room. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's one thing that I think can be helpful is you can just say, hey, this conversation is starting to upset me. Can we please change the topic? Yeah, can we please talk about, about it? Or just change the topic? Like, well, oh my gosh, what happened like, over there? You know, like one of that, like you do that to change the subject. Now you, now you women are figuring out why guys watch football at these <laughs> events. Like we don't have to talk. We're gonna, we're gonna watch. Yeah. These yeah. animals just kill each other for our amusement. Right? That's what they do in my family. Just put football on. Yeah, then we'll just sit there and like you know root for whomever. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to, I mean, you have this to, year, this year we're lucky because if you're into that, because uh, there's football games, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and of course there's always football games, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Wow. And professional football games. So it'll be easy. In fact, I'm dreading that going to the one at, at this, the one on uh, Christmas Eve, because God damn it, they're all from like Brazil and Mexico. So they watch that soccer shit. They don't watch football. <laughs> And <laughs> nothing personal, Mr. Andre. I know you're from that part of the world where they play soccer. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I love the World Cup. I'm going through withdrawal right now. <laughs> well, you know, you know what really educated me? And I realized what a limited view of the world I had as an American. I always thought like the Super Bowl was such a big deal. And, and then I'd been out of town overseas when the Super Bowl was going on. And you couldn't find it. Really? It wasn't. No, it's like they don't give a shit. But I've been out. I've been out of the country during the World Cup. I had to stop my training. Mm -hmm. Yep. When the games were on. <laughs> right. And and where was, I was in India and Malaysia uh, during the World Cup, different times. And it's like the guy said, "You might as well just take a break because nobody's going to want to be there." Oh wow! And I'm like, okay, fine with me. I get paid the same no matter what. So. You know, I'm flexible. You know, yeah, I think there were a billion people that watched the World Cup and the Super Bowl is like 1.2 million or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, like, what's his name? Who's the big soccer player? Be Beckham. Be well, Beckham's old, but the the younger one. Christian Ronaldo. Pulisic. Ronaldo from Hershey. No. Pulisic from Hershey. <laughs> Ronaldo. Either Ronaldo or Messi. Messi. I don't know. Messi. Right? Yeah. You know, if you if you put his picture up, something like 70% of the world's population will know who he is. Yep. You put up like Tom Brady, the most known American football player okay. outside of the states in Canada. Or for me. Oh. That's why they say it's uh it's football, not soccer. Only in the US we say soccer yes. everywhere else. Yes. They say it's yeah. football, not soccer. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, everyone. What do we know? Thank you. Have a, have a good holiday. Same to Thank you. You, you too. Bye-bye.